I am the wealthiest person I fucking know. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm the wealthiest person I know. I'm also the most successful person I know. Now you're like, wait, you just lost your mind. You just said these people are millionaires, billionaires. They're, they're so much more successful to you. No, 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 no. They might be richer than me, but they're not fucking wealthier than me. What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Steve Eckert Show podcast, episode number six. And listen, today we're going to talk about the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Basically, the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And and while we're at it, we're going to dive into the difference between being broke and being poor. And yes, there's a, a very fucking significant difference. We're going to dig into all that today. But first, let me tell you about the Steve Eckert Show. The Steve Eckert Show is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business. So you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms while you create your own personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. And a way to create that ideal freak freedom lifestyle. We're going to go deep into actually how to create that, what that even means, that word freedom in the next episode. But today we're going to kind of set the table for that by talking about what's the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And I think before we even go into the difference of rich and wealthy, we need to go into the difference of, all right, what's the difference between being broke and being poor? We need to know what the opposite is. It's going to help us understand how it, se- how, how it sets up and how that works with the rich And the wealthy. So first, broke versus poor. Let me break this down. Let me break it down for you. Poor people have accepted it. They've accepted it. Boo hoo. Poor little me. There's nothing I can do about it. This is going to be my lot in life, and I'm just stuck here. I'm gonna. I was born a poor bastard. I'm gonna die a poor bastard, and that's it. It, it, Boo hoo. No one is is gonna come and fucking save me. There's no knight in shining armor on the white horse coming in to fucking gallop in and swoop in and save the motherfucking day. And they'll just ride out into the sunset on their deathbed, an unhappy, unfulfilled person that never really lived at all. They just always were going to start. They were going to start living and they didn't do shit. The difference, the opposite of that, not the opposite, but the alternative to that is just a broke motherfucker. A broke motherfucker realizes they know where they're at in the game. They know what's going on. They have self-awareness, situational awareness. And also discipline to not throw in the fucking towel. A a broke person just views it as a a temporary thing on their way to growth. And they know that this phase of a brokenness, not broken, just fucking broke. They know it's the phase that's leading. It's the, the suffering and the struggle and the sacrifice and the hardship and the little bit of fucking pain. That is what with the broke, they know that that's required to get to where they need to go. That's a fucking difference. That's the difference between being broke and being poor. So that kind of sets the table for now. Let's go to the the flip side of that. The difference between the rich and wealthy. All right, you're you're poor. You're going to stay that way the rest of your life. Go ahead. Go fucking be poor. The broke people have not accepted that. They're going to do something about it. They're going to deal with it. They're going to work through the struggle. They're going to keep grinding, keep driving forward. They're going to do something about it and eventually become either rich or wealthy. Because in order to get to the rich wealthy phase, you're probably going to go through some phases of fucking broke, but not poor. Make no mistake about that and know the fucking difference. But now let's break down in much greater detail the difference between being the rich and the wealthy. Let me start by, by this. And I, I've talked about it on a, a podcast with, with the kids in the past. We did a Squire program in Texas, in Houston, Texas. The Squire program is a father-son program for fathers and sons between 13 to 15, kind of a rite of passage experience where the boys are becoming men. And it's, it's a bonding experience. And I got a certain amount of time alone with the kids, with the young men. And they, I only have about maybe 30 minutes where I'm alone with them to talk to them because any more than that will cause all kinds of fucking felonies and probably burn the town down. So I'm usually with the fathers, There's other instructors with the sons, but there is a point that I go connect alone with the sons, the group. So we had about 20 20 sons there. 
and I'm talking to them. And one of the questions I always ask them is, what percent do you think you know your father? And the average or even the max might have been 40 or 50%. But the average was around 20 fucking percent. 20 fucking percent of these young men, 13 to 15, who are about to eventually graduate high school, probably go on to college or start a career or whatever else, go out on their own and be a man in this world, feels like they know their own father 20 fucking percent. Like that that should fucking be a, like a light bulb moment going off. Like, all right, something's got to fucking change. Then I ask, what percent feel that they're best friends with their father? And we're talking specifically about fathers here. I'm a father. I could speak from perspective of a father. I can't tell you about being a mother. I don't associate as a mother. Although I guess I can decide to associate as a mother the way the fucked up world is going. I can go drink some motherfucking Bud Light and, be, and act like I say I'm a mother. I should have done that yesterday. Yesterday was Mother's Day. I could have got some fucking flowers or some presents on. I'm going to do that from now. I'm gonna, for one day a year on Mother's Day, I'm going to associate as being a mother because you could do that whatever the fuck you want. You could say you're a goat and start saying bah and walking around all day. So anyway, back to this. They, they said they only know their fathers 20%. And not even 50%, less than 50% thought they were their father's best friend. Like, holy fuck. And this really was like, for me, a light bulb moment thinking, all right, and these are very successful men for the most part in one way or the other. A lot of them, some very successful financially in their careers, their own businesses, entrepreneurs, shit, some of them freaking millionaires, multi-million dollar companies. And this isn't just there. These are even at speaking events and whatever else. Listen, this is not a, this is a common thing. This is a thing across the whole fucking country. This is the real lack of, of positive male roles, lack of wealthy lives and families as opposed to rich lives and families and, and, and fathers and positive male model, role models. That is the, the real fucking issue in this problem. There's not, it's not a gun control issue or a gender fucking control issue or even mental health. It's a lack of positive male role models. That's the freaking issue. And I, and I go to speaking events and I'll speak on stages and, and the lineup sometimes. I'll look at the lineup like, holy shit, that's some, some motherfucking rock stars. Sometimes millionaires, billionaires. And I'm speaking on the, uh, the same event as these people like, holy shit, who the fuck am I? But you know what? You know what I have to tell you? I am the wealthiest person I fucking know. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm the wealthiest person I know. I'm also the most successful person I know. Now you're like, wait, you just lost your mind. You just said these people are millionaires, billionaires. They're, they're so much more successful to you. No, 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 no. They might be richer than me, but they're not fucking wealthier than me. They're either as wealthy or less wealthy than I feel like I'm at at this point. And to me, that's the goal. That is the goal. That's the, this journey of, of getting better every day. This journey, that is what wealth is. And we're going to break it down. Now, I might not be the richest, but I am the motherfucking wealthiest at this point. And so what is wealth? If you look it up in the dictionary, you break it down, they're going to tell you things like it's a state, or state of being rich or material prosperity, like material things is what makes you wealthy or what you think makes you wealthy. Or an, an abundance of valuable possessions or money is what's considered wealthy. You know what? And whenever you look stuff up in the dictionary, I looked that up on whatever it was, dictionary.com or the thesaurus.com, something. They give you these old, obsolete definitions. Like, how does something used to mean something and it no longer does? You know what wealthy used to mean? You know what it used to mean? Not rich, not material prosperity, not state of being rich, not valuable possessions or money. It used to mean fucking happiness. It said that in the dictionary. It said fucking happiness in the dictionary. And then next to it in like italics or whatever the fuck it's called, it says obsolete. Meaning it's no longer considered happiness. It's now considered these new definitions of just being rich and having fucking money. So wealthy used to mean happiness. So I'm an old school motherfucker. I'll go with the old school version where it's more of an abundance of anything, not just an abundance of money, an abundance of... Uh, or or a, a large amount of, or a large supply of a desirable thing, an abundance of a desirable thing, that is fucking wealthy. Imagine if you have an abundance of a desire, desirable thing, something like your time, your energy, your discipline, your fitness, your health. Those are, an, those are desirable things. Time you spend with your kids, time you spend with your family, creating memorable experiences with your family. Those are desirable things, motherfucker. Just money? 
You know how many rich motherfuckers died miserable? And before that, sort of lived miserable lives. I'll leave it, I say sort of lived because they weren't fucking living just because they had a shitload of money. Like, that's what wealth is. It's a plentiful supply of desirable things. Desirable, to me, means the important shit, the priorities, not just the shit that, that you think you want. Fucking houses and cars. Yeah, that shit's all great. Those are all bonuses to a wealthy life. But those are not wealth itself. Those things have nothing fucking to do with it. Because you know the, the divorce rate, right? Let's say in, in, the, in the United States. Divorce rate is right around 50%. Do you know that the divorce rate among the every class, every tax bracket is still right around 50%? So it's not like, oh, you make all this money and now everything's great. No, if you're a fucking douchebag, you're a fucking douchebag. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole with a lot of money. That's all you are. You're probably an amplified asshole because now you have money or power and you think that money and power gives you respect, but it fucking doesn't. The divorce rate of millionaires and even billionaires is just the same. And there's even some ongoing studies that are whatever, inconclusive, blah, 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 bullshit. But there's even some ongoing studies to see if there's even a higher rate. What is the, how does the rate of divorce go the higher you go up in your tax bracket? Tax bracket. How fucking stupid is that, right? So the more you make, the more you have to fucking dish over. Percentage wise, so the more you get punished for busting your ass more. I can't understand how that, how that shit works. I think the, the original like taxes were like 2%. We went to fucking war over taxes at 2%. Now we're paying 35, 40, even more, damn near 50% when it comes down to it. When you get taxed multiple times in the same fucking dollar, anyway, we're getting off sidetracked on this shit. But there was also another study I saw, and, and, the, and any study is just a study, right? It's a controlled group, and if they did a study with say a thousand people. They can tell you the percent of those thousand people, but it doesn't mean it's the same everywhere in every culture, but just take it for what it is. There was a study, I think of over a thousand, 2000 millionaires and forget about the divorce rate of those millionaires. The divorce rate probably stayed about the same, but those something like there was a one study I saw that 89% of the millionaires that were in this study, 89% of them, their parents were not divorced. It was just a wild fucking statistic that stood out as I was doing research about this whole topic of being rich versus wealthy. Fucking wild. So what is wealthy? Now, does it take some riches to be wealthy? Depends how you look at it. If you want to create like these massive memorable experiences, like, all right, you could take your family on a trip and you could take a bus to get there. You could take a train to get there. You could drive your car for days to get there and stay in cheap hotels if you have to. That's fine. You're still going to go to say you want to go to... I don't know, freaking Disneyland or some shit like that. How you get there, you could get that experience of Disneyland. It's expensive as shit, but it so takes some money to do that. But how you get there, or you could t- fly them there, or you could fly them there first class or business class. So yeah, riches help in certain areas, maybe enhance some things, but you could still have an awesome experience. Shit, I drove across the country one time with, with Tyson. We drove across the country from California to New York we didn't stay in a single hotel. We slept in the car, both of us, in my truck. Every time we found a stop, we slept in my truck. that was loaded with all of our stuff. Went to New York, still didn't sleep in a hotel. We slept in my gym in New York for, we were there, I don't even know, five, six days, and then drove back another five, six days and slept in the car every time. Except for gas, there was no, no expense there, but it's an experience. Like that's an experience we're going to remember the rest of our lives. So it's not, you have to have these luxurious tri- trips and vacations. Yeah, that, that stuff helps. They're freaking cool as hell. Make no mistake about it. I'm not telling you not to make a shit ton of money, but don't think that that makes you wealthy. That makes you rich. That makes you rich and sometimes makes you a rich asshole, not wealthy. And we've done vacations where we did all, we did fly first class or we did go to state the nice places or go to Costa Rica, Aruba, Europe, wherever as, as a family for days or even sometimes weeks. I think we spent 14 days in Costa Rica or something like that. Family, they've spent three, almost four weeks over in Europe at some points. Like, yeah, you want to have some riches to, to add to being wealthy, but it's not necessary. But if you do things the right way and have the right fucking discipline, the right motivation, the right energy, the right confidence, take the right actions consistently over time, you can be rich and wealthy at the same time. That is like the ultimate goal. 
Yeah, you want to just be wealthy. And we're talking about real wealth, like spending time with your family, spending time with your kids, going on these vacations. Because you know what? The first, you know, the first vacation I went on, well, first, the only vacation as a, as, a, as a kid, I've talked about it in the past, was when we went to the beach. We went one vacation in life. It was in New Jersey Shore, five kids. My brother had left for the Marines, and we were able to go on the beach for five minutes at a time because it cost $1.25 or $1.50 to get a pass to get on the beach, a little pin. You stick it on your, on your bathing suit. And we got to go on there for five minutes by ourselves, pass the pin off to the other kid who had gone there for five minutes themselves, and we went home. Only vacation we ever went on. Only time I've ever been on a plane, or the first time I was on a plane, was heading to Marine Corps boot camp, going to step down to the Paris Island, South Carolina. That was my first vacation. So when it comes down to this stuff, I am, I'm, I'm going to give the experiences and do things for my kids that no one ever did for me. I'm going to give them experiences that I never had. I'm going to teach them how to think that no one ever taught me how to think, that I had to figure it out through pain and suffering and struggle. I'm going to teach them how to fucking think, teach them how to operate in this world. That, to me, is freaking wealth. Again, I have to keep re- reiterating, make no mistake, make shitloads of motherfucking money. I'm going to demand it. You're like duty and obligation to go make fucking money. How much money is out there? How many potential clients and customers you have out there to get you rich? But... Again, rich is not making you wealthy. Rich is money. Rich is making a shitload of money, but having to be on the road all the time, maybe sacrificing your time, your family. Wealthy is being home seven nights a week, except for the, the rare times that you're traveling once in a while, seven, times, seven nights a week for dinner, having dinner with your family. We have dinner as our free family every night, seven days a week. And a lot of times, if, if I'm not here, there's times where I'm at the projects, where we are off the grid. We are fucking dark and dirty, out in the trenches. I'm getting no sleep. We're training all the motherfucking time. I'll pop open a Zoom call on the two seconds I have when I'm driving from one spot to another. I'll pop open a Zoom call while I'm eating my fucking protein bar and the family's sitting down for dinner. We'll have dinner together on a fucking Zoom call when possible. But when there's not an event like that, we are having dinner seven nights a fucking week. Because you know why? Because I want to be wealthy. Not only when I was a kid, my family wasn't rich. They certainly weren't fucking wealthy. They weren't even broke. They were motherfucking poor. Poor mindset. Poor way of life. Poor, literally poor in the fucking bank account. And we never had a family dinner together. They were poor, poor physically, mentally, and fucking emotionally. Anytime there was... Everyone at the, it'd be a rare occasion. I don't even know. Not even once a month where everyone is at the dinner table at the same time. And if that ever happened, that anomaly that everyone's at the motherfucking dinner table at the same time, you know what would happen? It wouldn't, there would never be a completed dinner where someone didn't go and leave or storm off or get pissed off or someone's crying, screaming, cursing. The last dinner I remember, like sitting down, living at home was literally my father being drunk and just pushing the buttons. And I remember saying something like, something to my mother, I forget what. My mother was like ready to cry about something. I don't remember what. He was just being drunk and rude and disrespectful and being a fucking asshole. And I literally jumped on top of the dinner table off the the nasty fucking whatever the food was that we were eating and ran across the table and put a fork up to my father and threatened him. That's a memory I have of dinner in my house. Which is exactly why we have fucking dinner together seven nights a week. And sometimes on dinner, we'll go sit on the floor and go watch an episode of something. But a lot of, a lot of times, we'll also sit at the table. And you know what you do? You have a motherfucking conversation. Talk about your day. Talk about what you learned that day. What lessons you learned. What did you do? Talk about your workouts. Talk about your plans for the next day. Talk about some funny shit that happened to you that day. How about that shit? Once in a while, motherfucker. That's wealth. And it doesn't take motherfucking money to have that type of wealth at all. Wealth is to me is also before we started homeschooling, we call it home lifeing our kids because now we personally take on their personal education at home. Before we started homeschooling, they go going to school. I would take the kids to school two days a week. I'd pick them up once in a while. That was wealthy to me. That was the lifestyle I wanted to live. And I was going to do whatever it took to live that kind of lifestyle. That is wealthy. If I can never have dinner with my family and I can never take them to school and that I would also be home, be home when they got home from school five days a week when they were going to school, that is wealth. That is wealthy to me. There's not no amount of money in the world that could replace that. 
Now, would I want to be rich and live in that type of lifestyle? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So you could do it in a nice, uh, big ass house with a pool and a jacuzzi and a massive yard and front yard and backyard and lawn and all this other stuff. Fuck yeah, I want to do it with riches. But it's not required. That's, a, that's a, an enhancement. That's all that is. Like creating these experiences. Yeah, some of them cost money. We, we, we've done some expensive ass trips to Costa Rica, 14 days all inclusive where we're going skydiving or whatever the fuck that thing is called, zip lining. 1800 or 800 feet above the rainforest going head first on a Superman skydive. That's wealthy. That's learning how to become rich and staying wealthy at the same time. Then you create those different next level memorable experiences. But we also have memorable experiences where we're just sitting at home. Something funny happens at home. We're going over to the, the bookstore and harassing the fucking Karens. The freaking obese bitch with a, a, a mask on and a hazmat suit that's following us around the fucking store during the corona time. Telling us to put on our fucking face mask and do our part and stay six feet from each other. And then we get to the next aisle taking the fucking mask off. And this bitch is almost having a fucking coronary in the middle of the fucking aisle because we don't have a mask on. She just took tolls in the aisle over. And then we're sitting on the fucking floor reading books. And this bitch tells us that it's illegal to sit on the floor in Barnes & Noble and read a fucking book. It's against her store policy. Like, what the fuck? But I asked her, if we had a mask, can we sit on the floor? And I bet if I said yes, she would have let us. She'd say, yeah, we can. Holy fuck. We will remember that day for the rest of our lives. It was a free, we didn't even, I don't even know if we bought, but we probably did buy books. We're a sucker for books. We, we go in a store and we say, well, all right, we're not going to buy anything today. And if it's a bookstore, if it's a gun store, or used to be if there was like Legos or Nerf guns, they're passed out. But if it's a gun store or a bookstore, it's pretty hard for us to walk into a motherfucking store and not leave with shitloads of stuff. Or my wife to rush it if she goes into some store with boots or shoes or fucking makeup or goops and all those lotions and all that shit. Forget it. Talk about you need to be rich to deal with that shit sometimes. But that ain't wealthy. Making those, creating those experiences is freaking wealthy. Like we do 24 hour challenges, 24 hour fundraisers. That is wealthy. Those are free. We're pushing ourselves, pressing ourselves, having these memorable experiences. We remember that shit for the rest of our lives. We have family time on the calendar in one way or another every fucking day. Some days it's Board game time, some days it's outdoor time, some days at times it's workout time, some days it's video games, going for a walk, whatever it is. There's time in there to play with the dogs. There's this is wealth. That is wealth. Having having the lifestyle where you can do shit like that, that's fucking wealthy. Or I had a speaking, a speaking thing I had to go do in Texas. It's actually the same time as a squire. Now I could have flown in, it was a three-day event. The squire was on the middle day. I could have flown in the day before, stayed there for the three days, flown back in the day after, maybe stayed an extra day for some connections or do some other events, be there five, six days by myself, come back and see the kids. But you know what? I would have missed six fucking dinners. I would have missed six workouts together. I would have missed six family nights together. So what do we do? We took shit, two trips in a row to Texas. One time, it was a, about a 12, 14 day road trip. We took the RV to Texas all together just for me to go record a podcast turned it into a whole family thing. So I don't have to be gone from the family for so long. And two weeks after that, we all flew to Texas for this speaking engagement and for the Squire program. We all flew together. Now we don't all go for everything. Like I have a podcast that I'm going to record in two podcasts in Atlanta coming up this week. Every single time we don't do it, it becomes too much sometimes. So, but I'd say 50% of the time, the family's coming with me when I'm going places. So the rare times that I do have to go travel and be away, half the time I'm bringing them with me. So that makes it, brings it even less. That to me is fucking wealth. Does that cost money? Yes. So don't be fucking lazy. Don't make excuses. There's 8 billion fucking people on, the, in, on this planet and there's more money to go around than the world even knows to do with even in the hardest of times. So stop making fucking excuses and boo-hoo poor little me that I'm just poor. Like you keep acting poor and putting that label poor on your fucking forehead. Guess what? You're going to die a poor motherfucker. And you're doing a disservice to yourself, to your fucking family, to your kids to just tell yourself you're poor. Like, wake the fuck up. Like, what the fuck are you even here for to just say I'm poor? Oh, poor me. Little fucking stop story. Make yourself a motherfucking victim. Instead of say, okay, I'm in a phase of just being broke, but I'm going to fucking bust my ass and hustle and do the right thing and fucking grind it out until I could become wealthy. And once I find that, get that real stage of being wealthy, I could be rich and I could be rich and fucking wealthy at the same time. If you're just rich and not wealthy, 
in my mind, if you're rich and not wealthy, you know what that makes you? Makes you fucking poor. That's what that makes you. That's the way I see it. Makes you fucking poor. I saw this father. This was when we first moved to California. This is about three years ago. There was this fucking fat dude, fucking gut, bitch tits, walking through Disneyland, his phone in one hand. No, no, no. Actually, my bad. It was, he had like those little earpieces, right? Those fucking Blu-ray player earpieces. Remember the fucking Bluetooth earpiece in his ear. And he's walking through Disneyland. He's got a fucking ice cream cone in one hand, this fat motherfucker. He's holding his little daughter's hand. She must be, I don't even know, four or five years old, somewhere around there, give or take. And she's got an ice cream cone in her hand. And they're walking through fucking Disneyland. And this fat motherfucker is on his little earpiece phone. Like, you're going to Disney with your daughter, with your family, or going anywhere for that matter. Take that mother, that stupid fucking thing out of your ear. Who do you, what is, you are so important that you need to have an earpiece in while you're at Disneyland with your daughter? Like, wake the fuck up, dude. And he's sitting there. Not only is he having it in his ear, he's talking to someone on the phone there, arguing about some work-related stuff, about some meeting and something else. I don't even know. Like, you could tell it's work-related. It's heated. It's stressful. It's causing anxiety. He's uptight. And his daughter is walking next to him, this little girl, with the most sad, depressing look in her face. Her shoulders are slumped forward. She's just looking forward like a motherfucking zombie. And she's holding an ice cream cone, too. Now, the fat dude, the fat motherfucker, he is scarfing the ice cream down while he's fucking all anxiety. His uh, emotional eating or whatever he re- excuse he makes for having these big old bitch tits. But his daughter is sitting there with an ice cream cone also. Fucking strawberry. It's red strawberry ice cream. She's not even touching it. It's dripping down her hand and her arm while she just walks forward like this poor little child zombie. And her father in his head's thinking, oh, I am giving this girl this great experience. I'm being such a great dad. I'm taking her to Disneyland, spending all this money because we're fucking rich. I'm just going to work while we're there and make some more money. And I'm hitting this fucking microphone because it's getting me so fucking pissed off. He's, he's sitting there saying, oh, I'm making all this money and I'm even going to make more money while we're there so I could be even a better dad and give a, we could go to Disneyland more often and do more cool shit like this. And she's going to remember this forever. Yeah, she's going to remember this forever, motherfucker. When she's going to her therapist for the next 20 years for this traumatic experience at Disneyland, you think was some like big life-changing bonding experience. You're fucking over her whole mind and her whole life with this miserable experience sitting there arguing with someone on the phone about some fucking deal and you think you're fucking rich. Rich without wealth is a poor motherfucker. That's the kind of motherfucker that on their deathbed, no one shows up to your fucking funeral. Or people are too busy. They don't have time. It's too expensive. They can't get off from work to show up to your funeral. They can't fly out. It's too much of an inconvenience. Your funeral, motherfucker, is going to be an inconvenience to your fucking kids because you want to sit there with your fat fucking ass eating an ice cream and arguing with someone on the phone while you're with your kid at Disneyland. Instead of taking your lame fucking bitch ass little earpiece out of your ear and actually diving into the fucking experience, even though it's Disney and Disney's pretty fucking stupid, but it doesn't matter. If it means something to the little girl that has a fucking strawberry ice cream dripping down her arm, fucking dive all in. Give it attention. Be intentional about it. And take your dumb earpiece out of your fat fucking ear. How about that? That's the difference between being poor and being broke. That is the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And and an ideal freak freedom lifestyle we're going to dig into deep in the next episode. How about you combine? You work on self-mastery so much. You work on yourself so much. So much discipline and energy and confidence takes so much action and be your freak motherfucking self that you can have being rich and wealthy together in a synergistic world because the wealth is the good shit, the good stuff, the good life. Not being a douchebag, not being a fucking asshole, not being the fucking fat Disneyland dad. I'm going to start calling that. That's a term, the Disneyland dad. The motherfucker who thinks being rich makes him wealthy. Thinks being rich makes him a good father. Thinks being rich and having money and just giving whatever their kids whatever they want, when, except when the, what they really want is just you to put your fucking fat ice cream down and your fucking phone out of your ear. That's all they really want. But you think giving them all this other bullshit and then you're hardly ever at home because you're always working, making money. You, you, you spend all your time making money. You claim, if, you ask you, if, if we ask you what you're making your money for, why do you work so hard? You say, oh, I do it for my family. I do it for my family. But 
Your dumbass will fucking neglect the very thing that you say you're working for. You'll neglect your family by doing the thing that you say you're working for them so hard. It makes no fucking sense. You have an ass backwards. You need to get your fucking shit together before you're the motherfucker that has people too busy, your own fucking kids, your own daughter, too busy, or it's too big an inconvenience to come to your motherfucking funeral. I'm going to finish with this. I've already said it. Rich. Without wealth, you're a poor motherfucker. Get your shit together. It's fucking heavyweight on your shoulders. Nut the fuck up. Step up. And go all in on this shit. Quit the fucking poor mindset. Quit the fucking rich mindset. Go all in on growth and fucking wealth. This is real wealth. This is what we're talking about. Now listen, if this message resonates with you or you know someone that needs to hear this message, make sure that you like, subscribe, rate this on Spotify or wherever else, on, wherever else you listen to your podcast, on YouTube. Freaking sub- subscribe, like, la- add some comments down below. I want to hear your stories about rich versus wealthy, about poor versus broke. I want to hear your perspective on it, your thoughts on it, your experiences with it. Put that down below, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you next time on the Steve Eckert Show. This has been the podcast episode number six. I will see you next time in the case no one told you yet today. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.